What's up guys, Bogdan here and welcome to the Import Export Hub channel. So before we start the quiz question of the week, who is the largest exporter of uh, pistachios uh, in the world in terms of uh, exported um, value in 2019? Don't worry, you will find out the correct answer in a bit. Uh, stay tuned and watch the news and uh, let's start with the first one which is coming from uh, UK and it seems that uh, they are pushing forward with the signing of a new trade and investment deal uh, this time with uh, India and uh, as I've said in my previous videos they will try to get as much free trade agreements as possible from their former colonies and uh, from countries with whom they have a strong historical connection as they are also preparing a free trade agreement with uh, Jordan for example with uh, this uh, trade deal India will invest in the United Kingdom and they will create some uh, 6,000 uh, new jobs mostly in uh, Indian companies like uh, Wipro or uh, Curich Creations um, also there will be some um, UK companies that uh, already secure some export deals with uh, India and they will also create some uh, new jobs around 400 so good news uh, let's hope they, that uh, this trend will uh, go uh, on and uh, follow up uh, in the near future. Now moving on to the next news um, and I really don't know what's uh, going on there but it seems that everybody is starting to grow mangoes. This time it's Jamaica who is considering expanding the, mark, the mango export program especially with the United States so uh, fruit importers distributors from the us you could consider jamaica as a potential uh, sourcing country for your um, delicious mangoes and moving on to the next news um, and we stay again in the agricultural sector this time in uh, cambodia and uh, here we see an example where technologies that are adapted in order to replace the traditional far farming techniques can really drive the export of uh, agricultural products especially in developing uh, countries this news relates uh, to cambodia as i've said uh, and uh, it involves guess what uh, mangoes again it seems that uh, cambodia is uh, pre preparing a free trade agreement with uh, china and south korea um, of course the fta will not be limited to mangoes only but also to rice as um, Cambodia is a big rice exporter. An interesting uh, takeaway from this article is the fact that uh, China is importing uh, large quantities of agri products and I don't know if uh, there is something going on there that I don't know but uh, seeing China trying to secure agri products as much as they can it's a little bit concerning for me at least um, is there a food crisis there uh, they anticipate uh, something like this i really don't know anyway we will wait and uh, see now moving on to containers uh, i have this uh, news that comes from uh, triton which uh, is a container leasing company uh, who has ordered 890,000 TEUs of uh, new containers and they say that the capacity is already committed to long-term leases. Okay, I understand that uh, there is a huge demand at the moment for containers and for uh, the container manufacturers in China. I think this is a golden period, but still something doesn't add up adds, adds up for me at least uh, and uh, what i'm going to say is for the container shipping companies i understand that the empty containers are in uh, places where there is uh, not much export activity and you have to reposition them uh, but you choose not to but because adding them will probably drive the prices down um, I, all, uh, I also understand that the trend will continue well in 2022. It's not uh, coming from me, it's coming from Dury. But uh, at some point, uh, the freight rates will come to a normal, let's say. Um, 
again, we have to remember that HAPAG ordered uh, huge quantities. Uh, CME ACGM is building ultra large um, container carriers. Now, Triton is uh, ordering $2.6 billion worth of containers. <laughs> what is going on, guys? Again, I don't. Uh, I understand that some of the containers will uh, reach their end life, but I am afraid that uh, this will have some major repercussions as uh, balancing again uh, supply and demand after this uh, frenzy goes away will be very hard to achieve without either the container leasing companies or the shipping companies will uh, lose money not uh, utilizing their assets and in this case shipping containers. And uh, I am not even adding the fact that uh, some major importers, uh, exporters will invest in buying their own fleet of uh, containers in order to be more resilient, let's say. But uh, this is another story and uh, frankly I don't recommend buying containers for my company if uh, I was in charge. Because really this is not my core business. I will... Uh, always have to balance the equipment and it's hard to do even if you are Walmart, Amazon, HRM or any other multinational company involved in lots of import-export activities. Anyway, I'm deviating from the subject and the point here from my point of view is who is going to lose money but by not uh, utilizing their assets will be the container shipping companies or the container leasing companies what do you think guys is going to happen in three or four years please leave your thoughts in the section down below it's uh, going to be very very interesting to see this and now the next news comes from uh, australia and we are going back to australia last week i've uh, covered another topic covering australia the australian wines who were under the scrutiny of uh, China as there were some suspicions for uh, dumping the price for Australian wines on the Chinese market. Now the tensions uh, escalated and it seems that uh, China suspended the economic uh, dialogue with Australia. It's uh, very hard to see what uh, will happen there and uh, what's the real deal behind uh, all this trade war between Australia and China really. Anyway, from my point of view right now, it's uh, very difficult to ignore China's uh, bargaining power. And uh, from my point of view, the idea is to stop considering China just as a place where uh, cheap goods are made. If you are a world-known fashion retailer company in, uh, based in Europe, for example, uh, you can't ignore the Chinese market uh, with uh, its... Uh, 1 billion potential uh, customers. Anyway, that's my opinion and I will follow up on this issue as uh, new developments will occur. Now moving on to the next uh, video, uh, news, sorry. Uh, here I have a very interesting news for, for the um, US businesses coming from the Export-Import Bank of uh, the United States as there are some really interesting programs available in order to facilitate the exports of uh, US goods and services. You can find there the criteria the criteria for securing export financing and the programs for which uh, the funds are available. Uh, if you are based in the US and you are involved in exporting or want to start exporting, I highly recommend you to take a look at uh, this program as you might find some uh, opportunities for uh, financing your uh, exports. And we stay in the US as um, Walmart and Sam's Club retailers are offering faster payments and new financing opportunities to assist uh, suppliers in overcoming access to capital challenges. It's uh, really interesting, at least for me, to see this kind of uh, initiative uh, coming from big retailers who are trying to help uh, their suppliers, uh, especially um, small and medium um, ones. And I think that uh, the trend will continue with uh, other big, uh, big uh, retailers too. Of course, you don't have to be naive and think that Walmart is not uh, gaining anything, but uh, nonetheless, this uh, drives competition as another financing options uh, option emerge for uh, the small and medium enterprises and yes most probably uh, 
will improve uh, their access to capital and um, at uh, better interest rates. Now moving on to the transport and logistics with my last info for uh, this video we see that uh, DSV has uh, list some containers and chartered I think it's a voyage charter an uh, 1800 EU vessel to operate a direct service from China to Northern Europe uh, guys, the demand is so big, the space on the vessels uh, so limited and the freight costs so big that uh, DSV decided to take uh, ma matters in their own hands. That's very impressive if you ask me and I'm really curious if this type of venture will be replicated by uh, others in the short term as the freight prices for containers will uh, continue to be high well into 2022. It remains to be seen, but I think that uh, once this uh, frenzy will uh, fade out and uh, considering the tense relationships between the freight forwarders and uh, shipping lines, well, I think this uh, type of endeavor will be more and more frequent, if you ask me. I might be wrong, of course, but uh, one thing is certain for me, the relationship uh, between some uh, freight forwarders and uh, shipping lines is deteriorating and if the freight forwarders don't find solutions for their clients they will uh, lose precious uh, business in no time anyway that's it for today uh, thank you all for watching i really hope you've uh, i've uh, given uh, some uh, useful information don't forget to comment uh, hit the subscribe and uh, like buttons and until next time Keep your business safe. And by the way, the correct answer is uh, the United States with more than $1.7 billion uh, dollars worth of exports. Take care.